Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Ladies and gentlemen, to WH Radio, I am Skits, and I'm here with Oscar and Tom, and I think Matt's there, am I sure? I'm here, I'm here. Welcome to Wrestling Radio, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Royal Rumble 2015 Aftermath, as we uh, basically talk about Royal Rumble since tonight, Monday Night Raw was canceled, we'll get into uh, the talks about the interviews tonight a little later, but uh, I think we should just go step right up into it and talk about the rumble last night um i know some folks uh were wrong on the show and i can admit i was wrong yes my boy d brian did not get the w um hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 hey, what skit. Skit, i on, told skit. you so is that it is that what we're here right now hey you know what matthew grant Go fuck yourself. And <laughs> you're not alone, man. Wait a minute. Wait. You're not alone. If, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, did I remember a certain Oscar saying, R-E-L-A-X, relax. You know, WWE is not going to do something stupid. Because, you hey, know, hold on, Tom. Is, Tom, let's not forget, you also and, said Daniel Bryan, too. Hey, guys. Oh, no, I picked, I picked hey Daniel guys. Bryan. But I, I also right. said I had that bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I, I, I you know, right. because you know, because you want to know why? It's because I'm an idiot. It's because I think, oh well, the WWE can change and they can learn. But no. Hey guys, so, I love being right. That's all I got to say. I'm not gonna come <laughs> yeah. out as an idiot or anything, but um, well, I'm gonna. You know what's good? You know what's good? Even though we all know who the winner of the Rumble is, you know what, man? We're going to Mania. We're going to have fun. Fuck it. You know, what all I got to say, fucking inner fun. All I got to say, there's always a plan B. That is all I have to say. Um, but I like, how about we get... Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Please, just say I was right. Come on, guys. Just give you, that to me. You know what? I'm not bowing down to you, damn it. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> no, but um, of course, ladies and gentlemen, Roman Reigns won. Um, we're gonna talk about that a little later. Um, but let's let's talk about the kickoff show that really was a uh, a good kickoff. Uh, now, now speaking of being right, you guys were right. I was wrong on this one. I could admit it, Skip. I thought I was going for a new day on this match. <laughs> I will never go for for, for a bum ass team called the New Day. I don't care if they're black or not. Um, <laughs> but but um, the Brass Rings Club, which is uh, my boy uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, uh, went against New Day, and the fans were behind Cesaro and Tyson whoa, 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 Kidd the whole club shirts, match. Bullet club shirts, oh. guys. Hey, those shirts were dope. I want one. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I like them. I, I, I definitely want one, and I know I'm going to have to check later on on uh, Twitter to see uh, what Carl Anderson uh, had to say about those shirts. But, uh, but uh, oh, he, let's go he ahead totally and talk about his match. Totally tweeted out the two sweet. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and talk about his match, though. We had uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd going against Big E and Kofi Kingston from the New Day. And the New Day basically, uh, yeah, they got shitted on the whole night. Uh, Philadelphia was definitely 
on their head the whole night, which they uh, should be, because it's. I would say the, the New Day is a big fail. I just don't know why the why the WWE has been having these guys go over on Raw. Um, it's like, come on, like, what's going on? Uh, but a great, great match. Uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro pick up the W. I know I, I was shocked and I was happy. Uh, let's get everybody's thoughts here on the show on what they thought about uh, the victory. Uh, let's start with you, Oscar. Yeah, I was actually shocked. I, 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 I always thought, you know, that you know that the whole Cesaro Tyson Kidd team was the team that had had the new day to just just beat, you know, just put it that way. But then last night it was shocking. I mean, but didn't shock me the crowd, you know. Even respect to Cesaro, and maybe a little bit of Tyson Kidd as well. You know, I I respect him a lot. I always liked Tyson Kidd, even back then when he was TJ Wilson. And remember Canadian back in the days, you know, Matt. <laughs> um, yeah, it was shocking they got the victory, but I was like I said, I was going for the New Day. I thought the New Day was going to win. I thought maybe they'll do something to have him attack Team Tosh on the future. But I'm actually happy that I'm wrong at one, for once. So. Yeah, I, I'm going to give a shout-out to the Brass Rings, you know. I got the Brass Ring Club, right? I got I to gotta get used to their new name. Brass Rings Club. And um, hopefully they'll do something in the, few, in the next few months. Hopefully maybe they get a WrestleMania tag title shot instead of the, the intention. But we can talk about the intention in a little bit. I mean, real quick, I know you just mentioned the intention. I mean, I know we just mentioned also WrestleMania. I mean, common sense, if the WWE Smarts did go take advantage of that win uh, with uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro and maybe, you know, have them, you know, start upsetting teams like maybe Stardust and Goldust and uh, maybe, you know, beat the Usos maybe one day on Raw and uh, we'll probably see those guys maybe in a tag team title uh, shot matchup uh, probably later on in this year because uh, these guys work well as a tag team, and plus they're both great singles wrestlers too. Uh, Tom, let's get your thoughts on uh, that matchup. Yeah, I was actually surprised. Um, I figured it was going to be another New Day victory, um, but it was good. It was good that Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, I mean, finally got a win. Uh, you know, thank God. Uh, will this lead to anything? I don't know. Is it going to lead to anything for Cesaro and Tyson Kidd as a tag team or either of them in the future? I have no idea with those two. But it was good to see them uh, pick up a win on pay-per-view, even though it was uh, the pre-show. And, yeah, that that Philly crowd was behind Cesaro and Tyson Kidd 100%. And, you know, I commend them. They made sure to uh, have their voices heard, as we'll talk about later. Yeah, um, and let's not forget those two were great as a tag team too. Uh, how about the uh, the Cesaro swing along with the kick? Yeah, that's a, that's a flashback to uh, Kings of Wrestling right there. You know, it's funny that a few weeks ago we're all were bitching, complaining about Cesaro that they took away the swing and now he brought it back. So, what was the purpose of the swing was taken out for a few months? That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a mystery right there. So if, if you blame Vince McMahon, then why is he in the swing now? Who knows? Yeah, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't know what they were. I, I have no idea what they were doing with Cesaro. Like you said, the swing was one of the most over maneuvers in the WWE and was one thing that the crowd was getting behind and they took it away because they didn't want him to become a baby face. For whatever reason, I don't know. Yeah, uh, Matt, did you want to share your thoughts on uh, the opening kickoff, Matt? I was really intrigued on how they they booked this contest. I really felt like um, the six man elimination match would have been a lot better, but I guess with an injury to Xavier Woods, you can re- you couldn't really do that. Um, the tag team match was really well done. Uh, I can't believe I'm actually saying that because that's not what I expected as the WWE, especially in this kickoff show. But uh, it was Teddy Long's wet dream all night, and uh, the right team won. Definitely, man. And just like I said already, what? like let's hope uh, no. we. 
Go ahead. No, I was going to say, one thing before we move on, like, I just want to say, get Adam Rose away from those two, please. He, it's like, but I see him there with Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. It's like, come on, it's, he, he looks out of place. It's like saying, we have uh, two bunnies and there's a fucking werewolf right there. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm definitely with you on that. Just, I mean, it's kind of like he's like their mascot, basically. But uh, <laughs> mascot with fucking rosebuds. Yeah, we'll see what happens with uh, that. I'm pretty sure they'll have, they'll like have Adam Rose disappear out of that, you know, circle. So, because he's he's the only one out of that group that's not getting W's. We've seen how long he lasted in the Rumble, which we'll talk about later. Um. But um, how about let's move on to the opening contest of the Royal Rumble. Um, we had the New Age Outlaws go against uh, the newest uh, tag team on the main roster, uh, the Ascension, which I have no problems with those dudes, unlike a lot of people on Twitter. Uh, you know, of course, the New Age Outlaws basically, you know, had to put these guys over. And uh, they don't look bad. Uh for their first pay-per-view match, you know, another match wasn't long, but uh, it was a decent, you know, opener. Um, and uh, again, I know Matt Grant here. Uh, he actually said that uh, the Outlaws were basically going to get job like they got job at WrestleMania last year, and that's what happened. I mean, hey, they helped the guy get over. It. And I know we were talking about last Friday here on Wrestling Heads Radio. Um, are the Ascension going to start, you know, going against old tag teams? Uh, maybe, like, something like, you know, how Randy Orton was, like, the legend killer. You know, they face old tag teams. And, you know, you know kind of like a little storyline like that. Because since they've been taking shots at old tag teams and, like, older guys, how they did, you know, on Raw last week when they went at Scott Hall and Nash and X-Pac and APA and, and the Outlaws, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I it's funny that you brought up what I said last week, and uh, I just listened to Taz's, uh, the Human Podcast Machine's uh, Royal Rumble reaction. It's like 15 minutes long. I definitely suggest it, because Taz has got a good point of view on the whole thing, but uh, he kind of suggested what I brought up last week. I mean, after the pop Bobby Ray Dugley got and the Rumble, why not just bring the Dugleys back and have them have a, a long feud with the Ascension? That'll get these guys over, man. You know, I think... You, you... One of us did mention that if it wasn't Eric was mentioned that it would have a few with uh, attention. And for those that didn't watch uh, Royal Rumble tonight or yesterday, uh, Bubba Ray is returned to the WWE. And from what the dirt sheets say, he is always welcome to return to the WWE and most likely – it's going to happen because if you didn't see the promo on WWE Fallout, uh, he basically said WWE is home. So um, that's kind of like uh, a tease, I would say. Uh, Plus, but, it's probably uh, better for Bully well, to uh, to be wrestling in front of 500 people. Or sorry, instead of uh, in front of wrestling in front of 500 people, he's just wrestling in front of like thousands of people. So at least there's that. Well, just right. put it this way. I, I, right now, I know he's scheduled to do a couple of more indie shows. I think he's going to do another House of Hardcore event, and I think he has still has the two CW tag team champion. I was going to so, say that actually because I follow one of the the two CW representatives, and they were saying something about that. So yeah, so if anything, if they're, if they're going to come back, it might, might be after Mania. So I don't think it'll, they'll they'll make it in time for Mania. If, if you guys want to see an Ascension versus Dudley Boys match. But um, another thing, what about Devon? Does he want to work that schedule? Yeah, no, yeah, no, you have to know about Devon though. I know he's a he's a family man. You know, I, I don't think he doesn't want to work that schedule. You know, in, in his age. So if Why anything, not just they're gonna come Rock back. Hudson. Nah, nah, get out of here with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but come on. Uh, I mean, they don't have to do house shows. I mean, if anything, they might both might just sign legend contracts, and if they want to do a pay per view. Feud between the Ascension, I can see that happening. So, Bubba had a great pop. You get Devon back in, they'll be, 
they'll still have pops, no matter where, what city it is, even in Philadelphia or they do one in fucking Las Vegas, you know. They'll have a great pop, and people will want to see them go kick the Ascension's ass. And the one thing I like about the Ascension right now, they're, they're getting up tons of heat, which they're supposed to be heels. They're getting heat. I'm kind of liking what they're doing with them now because you're making them disrespect all these tag teams. What what did they do? Fucking put in like this, like the demolition or or the Steiner Brothers in the Hall of Fame this year, and it have them interrupt that video. That will fucking give them more heat. I will love to see that. I mean, I'm liking what they're doing with the Ascension. Just keep doing it. But at the same time, I'm I'm hoping that this could lead back to or resurrect this. This whack ass tech, tech division they've been having, but at the same time, you know it's WWE. Who knows what the fuck they're doing? So we'll see what happens. But like I said, right now I like right now what they're doing with the extension. But then there's gonna be a time where this whole disrespect and legend thing is gonna gonna be old. So yeah, I, mean, I was I, I got to say that last day, disrespecting man. legends being old. I see what you did, Oscar. <laughs> um, what a pun. Uh, well, any time that shit's gonna get old. Like, okay, five months later, oh yeah, we're better than uh, the Rockers. Okay. Yeah, that's Real wait. Quick. What they need to do with the Ascension is transition them from disrespecting legends into the destructive machines that they were, you know, on NXT. Is they should just have them come out. <clears throat> they don't even have to beat up tag teams. They could just come out and destroy, you know, random singles competitors. It doesn't have to be tag teams. You just have to turn them into, you know, a, a credible force in, in the tag division and in that company. You can't – and you can't have, you, you know, JBL and Michael Cole and, and Booker T burying these guys on commentary. Make them seem like they're the most intimidating tag team that we've seen in years. Don't hey, bury them and say they're goofs and they're morons and all that. It's You have to make them – you have to feel like – you're going to be intimidated when you see these guys come down, not like they're jokes. So speaking of the commentary, speaking of Booker, of speaking of Booker taking, or sorry, taking up for the ascension, or I should say, burying the ascension. Aren't Harlem Heat taking bookings? What if we see Stevie Ray and Booker T? You know what? I was uh. going to mention that. I was going to mention. I heard they're doing some kind of reunion coming up, but Harlem Heat reunion against the ascension? Not bad. I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, it would be nice because we never... Yeah, I was going to say the problem with that is you can do the Dudleys and the New Age Outlaws because even younger fans kind of know who they are, and a lot of younger fans probably won't know who Harlem Heat is, and a lot of people probably kind of forgot about them unless you were, you know, unless you're a pretty avid wrestling fan. You kind of you're a hardcore WCW fan, too. Hey, I mean, people wouldn't expect the same, or I should say, wouldn't expect the reaction that Sting got, but look at the reaction Sting got, and he's never been in WWE. Let's not forget, Sting was also on TNA, and kids watch TNA also. Do you? (laughs) You know what? I I know there's a lot of people might give me shit right now, but, man, I got another idea what they could do to piss all of us off. Why not the WWE, for one time... Bring in the young bucks as jobbers and have the extension beat them. Not happening. And then we're gonna be out here talking shit. No, I, 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 stop it. Stop it. To. Let's just end that right now. You see, you see, you see, we're gonna be talking shit on the show if that ever happened. But that would look great on the extension though. At one point, as heels, oh. you gotta make them hate them. We gotta make them hate them. There you go. Uh, if you bring in the young bucks, say- these guys gotta be fucking elite and ready to go, just like. Just like, um, you know, how when they signed Devitt and they signed Kenta and they made these guys, they basically pumped these guys up already. You know, they say these guys are established, you know. No, don't bring the bucks in those fucking drivers. Like, what are you thinking, bro? (laughs) Damn it, Skits. I thought we were transitioning into a Smash Wrestling plug and you were going to talk about Drew Gulak and Biff Busick. (laughs) (laughs) We actually have a couple callers here, too. We can, we can get to that later because that was a great tag match. But if if the Bucks were ever to come to the WWE, they have to look like the greatest team ever. I'm sorry. Exactly. If you're not going to build them up like they are the best team ever that, existed, I'm just saying don't, that to make us get pissed off more, you know? That's <laughs> more if they ever done that. And, That's what I'm and, trying to do here. Nah. 
That's a no-go. The Bucks got to come in ready to go. They got to be strong uh, when they come in the fucking company. You know what I'm saying? You, they can't come in and looking like some scrubs. Yeah, got, and you can't, you can't, as much as WWE probably would want to, you can't change the Bucks. You know, what they're doing right now and what they've been doing for years with the two sweets and the suckets and the super kicks, it's who they are. You change that about them, then, I mean, yeah, they still have, you know, incredible wrestling skills and they're awesome on promos, but it just makes them whole as a tag team and it makes them unique and funny and you can hate them. That's why there's always, let's go, Young Bucks, fuck the Young Bucks. Because people young lose bucks. Them yeah. them. Young Bucks, Young Bucks. I know Skits was trying to get to this. Uh, we do have but a But we'll see the if they ever... We will see if they ever sign a WWE contract, which right now, if I just say right now, I'll say no. No problem. Real quick, and just hold that thought real quick, because I think we have a caller, guys. We got two callers, um, actually. Let's throw on the uh, 301 area code first. That's Marco for Tacos. All right, let's do it. 301, you are on Wrestling Heads Radio. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Mark no. up the tacos. What it do, brother? I, I, I got. I, first of all, I have to make a very unpopular statement. Fuck the young bucks. Oh, it's all good. Uh, it's all good. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Man. Hey, you hey. can say fuck the young bucks, and I'm gonna say let's go young bucks. Yeah, exactly. Let's go okay. young bucks. You know the thing is, okay. I don't know how many super kick flip, super kick for kick flip. Where's the ring psychology, man? You know. That's all they do. We, you, you, you know what? I know you always talk shit about uh, PWG. But you, you need to come to a, a yes. fucking yes, uh, PWG um, um, fucking event because there's half. Dude, it'll be the best show of your life. Well, hey, 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 man! I ain't going down there just to get jumped. <laughs> you ain't getting jumped. Trust me. You, wow. There's people. Yo, peep this out real quick. There's people that come from fucking uh, France. To come to PWG shows, yo, that's how I big would it is. come to PWG. And I, I'm from I, Canada, so we're making this happen. I don't this think dude. this guy. Will, to be honest with you, I don't think you'll get jump at a PWG show only unless you come out and say "fuck PWG" like a hundred times. I remember during Bolo oh, nah. week, there was these, these these guys trying to start CCW chances. Did they get jumped? No. <laughs> but he just blew uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody who's trying to start a CCW chant at a PWG show just needs to walk out the door. But let me let me clarify this. Let me clarify this because I'm a big fan of Ring of Honor and PWG, New Japan, AIW, Beyond Wrestling, Shimmer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just the Young Bucks, man. Okay, I, you know they're, they're talented, man. I give them that. They're talented, man. I give them that. But it's like they're not my cup of tea, man. They're just I think they're self righteous dickheads and they're marks for their own self. And well, I that's not the guys so I've so ever met. That's their whole gimmick. Their gimmick is that they're marks for themselves, and they think that they're the best fucking thing that ever walked this planet. But they're nice Earth. dudes. <laughs> they're yeah, nice guys. It, like I said, really, really, they're, 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 they're nice guys. I, I, know, you know, I know men people, help me block, so I don't know how they're nice guys. But eh, okay, is this really a conversation? <laughs> like people forget that this is wrestling. There's gimmicks. Yeah, this is a conversation. You know? I mean, yeah, yeah, I get that, man. It's just you know everybody's not gonna like everyone. That's all, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. You know, when you chant "fuck the young bucks," we'll be over here chanting "let's go young bucks." I know, but because trust me, those guys. It, if you ever meet them, these guys are super nice, bro. In 2015, it's so popular to do the too sweet and say "suck it." I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, they brought it Come back, on, man. man. They made it relevant. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's like an overkill now. It's, you know, it's I mean, like, it's, to each throw, I guess. Bullet Club does the, the too sweet thing, so they you know do yeah, too sweet yeah. because they're from Bullet Club. So I mean, the suck it thing, right. the Bucks just do that just to, just just to fucking do it. But I know you had some more shit in your and mind man, about the Rumble. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to throw in one quick thing. I'm just more of a Briscoe's man, and not the young Bucks. That's all. That's all. You know, but uh, I, I respect that. Yeah, man, but uh, the I rumble, agree, man. I agree. The rumble, ugh, ugh. Yeah, I don't want to, man. I don't want to say what everyone else has said already, man. But I, you know, with Brian, okay. First of all, he doesn't win. You know that sucks enough. But 
the dude's in there for, what, not even 15 minutes and he's gone? That's what I don't understand. I mean, uh, how are they not doing shit intentionally to fucking troll us, man? They, they got to be doing shit like that just to spite people that love Brian, just to spite the so-called IWC. I see no other way around it. I mean, I I definitely know how you feel because I was pissed, and Matt was like the guy telling me like, trust me, the W League are gonna fucking go ahead and have Roman Reigns win this, and I really want to believe that Daniel Bryan was gonna surprise everybody, and I was gonna come back on his show and say I told you so, but yeah. we know what happened. But um, I hope they got something planned for him. Uh, Coming fast hey, man. And, and, and WrestleMania. Hey, man. I don't want to break anybody's hearts, but I got a bad feeling. Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose versus Kane in the Big Show at WrestleMania. Oh, oh man. God. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. of course. <laughs> I course, that I can... or Bryan versus Shane. I'm going to go old yeller myself, guys. See you later. <laughs> I'm with my, this. My IQ I'm... just dropped. I'm with that. a Daniel Bryan and versus Dean Ambrose match. Have Dean Ambrose turn heel at Fastlane. I'm with that. Yeah, that that could I'm work. With, but I'm, but I'm being like, Wyatt? I'm just trying to be realistic. I mean, if they're talking about Wyatt and Undertaker, you know, if that doesn't happen, then yeah, Bryan and Wyatt. Because Dean Ambrose has nothing on the platter right now. You I don't know. If big was, show. I don't know if it was rumors or somebody was just screwing around, but somebody said something about the casket match happening on SmackDown. Maybe Taker shows up and faces Kane. That leaves Brian free. Um, I don't know about all that, but I just feel things is going to be Bray Wyatt Undertaker. But what 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 um what shocked me earlier that a match I thought was going to happen in WrestleMania is going to happen in Fastlane would be John Cena versus Rusev. So it'll be a rematch. I don't know if I, I don't know. We want to see another rematch at WrestleMania. I don't know if that will happen. Well, hey, hey, you, you I, know what's going to happen. You know that this Rusev is the WWE is we are win. talking about. Rusev is going to get the win at Fastlane just so Poster Boy can get the big win at WrestleMania. I think that'll be dumb. I think that's completely dumb having a rematch at WrestleMania. That'd be completely dumb. I'm it's just the hoping WWE, right? That, yeah, but I'm just hoping that if if he could go over like John Cena, go over Rusev at uh, at uh, fast lane, and maybe John Cena could wrestle one of those two, either Daniel Bryan or Dean Ambrose. Just, just have a match. I don't know. I wouldn't. I so, wouldn't complain on a John Cena uh, Daniel Bryan match either. You know what? If WWE was smart, because you have Roman Reigns won and everything like that, don't make that match last. I think I'd rather have John Cena and Daniel Bryan have that match be the last one, and then you can have the crowd happy. Just have Daniel Bryan go over, and I and I think. Because people right now or, or, or ex WWE star is always talking shit about John Cena that he's like a fucking spotlight hog or whatever. But I feel like he respects Daniel Bryan a lot, and if he even though he's a spotlight hog, I think he wouldn't mind putting Daniel Bryan over him at WrestleMania. <laughs> well, yeah, he is. Man. Yeah, I mean they're they're basically brother in law. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was just gonna say, you know, I I like that matchup idea, but. It, it hurts my brain to even think that they would turn it into a total divas angle. That's what worries me about them doing that. <laughs> so uh, while it's a good idea, I would worry about that. And they well, we saw what happened at SummerSlam Nikki, two years ago. Yeah, Nikki yeah. and Bree get involved, and Nikki and Bree start fighting with each other again, and then you know, and then we're all sick of that. You know what? Let those Cur- bitches fight with each other and kill each other and not come back on the damn TV no more. I actually wanted to talk about the Bellas a little later when we get to the Divas match, too, because I seen something last night about them, which we'll talk about later. But, um, did you want to talk about something else about the Rumble? Because we have another caller on hold. Uh, well, you know, regarding the Rumble, I mean, you can't knock the triple threat. I mean, that was a great match. That, but that, was that match the was only... amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was the only, uh, Spot of sun, so to speak, during the whole show. It was only. What about Bubba? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. You know, that was cool. But you know, he was going to be in there for ten minutes and then be gone. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah that, that was cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the three way and uh, Bubba Ray Dudley, and uh, yeah, that's where it ended. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I look forward to talking to you guys later on and coming up with my first column sometime soon. But I will definitely catch you guys down the road. Take it easy, man. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, remember, tomorrow's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I know who this. Yeah, I know who this next caller is. Um, he's Three actually uh, a good friend of ours here on WH Radio, Mr. Matt Laurie. Oh, what's man. going on? What is going on? Whoa. On, okay, okay, hold on. I want to ask you a question that you were mentioned don't a few him. months ago, but don't ask him now. I want to do that question. Well, he was happy a few months ago. I want to know what he's talking about now. Oh, don't you don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> you honestly, you do not want. When I heard that, I was literally sick. I, I, because I was like, I, the, the potential was there, and then they turned this into a whole gospel thing, as if they have them clapping their hands, smiling, like, oh, everything is positive. I'm like, what is this? What what is this? Anyway, though, oh man. Anyway, though, but that 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 just sums up the frustration I have with last night's event. <laughs> All right. Us, if, if if I if I can elaborate real quick on this, give us your thoughts. Well, honestly, with this whole with the with the whole event, I felt the whole event as a whole was just a complete downfall outside of the triple threat match. I think the triple threat match was the only positive of that event. So And so, it, it, to me, it felt like it was a waste of time. And then the triple threat match, which and when it, I sat there and I watched it, I was like, all right, you know what? I expect Daniel Bryan to win this. It's the smart thing for them to do. You know, it, I'm thinking, I'm ho- having hope here. I'm like, they can't be that dumb you know, to have Roman Reigns really win this thing. Nope. You First off, you you eliminate Daniel Bryan early, completely kill the crowd. You have Roman Reigns win the match, and the fans are just booing him. Just completely just the silly fans are booing him. And not only that, after that, you have what? You have a whole bunch of people to cancel their subscription to... to the WWE um, network, and it was the number one global trend last night too. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's a uh, number two right now. Supposedly the number was like two hundred and seventy thousand that canceled, and they had like thousand in the first place. Oh yeah, their stock went down actually. Their stock went down a little bit because of that. And it, it, it and it makes sense because this is the how many time WWE troll their fans and they don't get it. I I truly think this company this this company do not get it. When you sit there and you force feed c- certain superstars on on in the fans. Now I'm not saying Roman Reigns is a bad guy or anything. He's a hard worker. I'm sure he worked hard for that, and he didn't really deserve that. But he's not. But he's not the guy who people want to see. They need to know you have to give these people what you have to give the people what they want to see. That's how you keep the people happy with your product. And they they don't they don't get it. I I truly think they just do what they think is like. Oh, these people these people want this. Oh no. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to give you the opposite. Oh, you want Daniel Bryan to win? Nope. We're just going to give you Roman Reigns. Like, really? You might as well give us, you might as well give us, um, um, give me a net. Give me a, you guys might as well have Santino return to have him win the whole thing and win the title. It, it, it might, might as well. I know True's going to love this if I mention it or if he listens back. Uh, Milan Miracle, too. Oh God! <laughs> I'm I'm sure I'm sure True will really just will be happy about that. <laughs> All right, hold on. I just I think I just read something right now that Dolph Ziggler put out a tweet and it says, "Yo, GB Daniel Bryan, I was pulling for you, brother. But if you really want to steal the show, hashtag WrestleMania, I'm he- right here." 
and way angrier. Hashtag raw. I don't think they're going to do that. Ziggler versus D. Ryan? Ziggler, no who could play right here. Ziggler and Daniel Bryan would be, would be pretty good. I wouldn't mind that. But you know what? I'm at the point where I'm like, they're going to do the complete opposite. Oh, you want Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler? No, we're going to give you Kane versus Dolph Ziggler. Let me ask you a question. Do you guys think this is Vincent K? Big man, for sure. Like, it with is. The- there is nobody oh. else on the face of this planet Earth that is as okay. delusional, that is as out of touch with what people want as Vince McMahon. There is nobody. Nobody. I can one up you. Okay, okay I well, can, I can one up. I can one up you at, to a to a point. Well, not to a point. To not to a T, but to an extent. I can one up you right there, because there's because there's a few guys actually, not just him, but there's a few guys who actually who are who somewhat out of touch. And I know, and it may be unpopular to you guys. It may be an unpopular opinion, but. I'll let you finish before I get into it. Well, I was going to say that there's another name that maybe you guys will not think it will be him, but I'm also blaming him. But he actually came up with the idea to have the Roman Reigns win the Rumble a few months ago. And the guy is, everybody say he's the savior, Triple H. It was his I idea. was going to say this. I was yeah. going to say this. Listen to this, though. Vince McMahon's original plan was to have The Rock go against Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. So, and I guess your buddy thought this was dumb. So, like, how about you need someone in your current roster to beat Brock Lesnar. You don't need someone from the past. So, I I have to blame Triple H a little bit of this because it was his idea. And plus, yeah. I, I'm sure that he did not know when Daniel Bryan was coming back. But even though when Daniel Bryan come, came back, I guess he still stick with the plan. And then look, look where it's taking them. And at the same time, I bet you Vince McMahon is fucking laughing his ass off, saying, "Ah, like he doesn't know his shit," you know. Well, here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I'm glad they didn't go as much as I like The Rock. I'm glad they didn't go with The Rock versus Brock Lesnar thing because you're you're right. You need somebody on your current roster to beat Brock Lesnar. Two, yeah. you don't need anybody else out of your current roster. Who's a, or on your Legends roster who only shows up once every five pay per views? I mean, or both once guys every are the same shows. thing. If you want to be honest, both guys that's are the saying. same that's, that's type of I'm guy. Saying. That's what I'm saying. And that's, that's I would have been saying. down with that. Match. You don't need. I would have been. It's, I would have been down problem. with that match. It's just. I would do, you, be, do you really? Do you? Here's my thing, though. Do you really want to see a champion? Who shows up once every now and then, as you do with Brock Lesnar, or do you want to see a, a champion who's on there constantly? I think I'll I mean, go constantly. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind a Rock versus Brock, but not a title match. If none of them were even the yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But, yeah, I would have. I mean, if you're gonna go with Brock and uh, The Rock, you can have fucking. Somebody go Seth over uh, last night, you know. That that definitely could have happened last night, you know. But um, they chose, you know what happened. Lesnar's a champ. Yeah. And we're going with Roman Reigns. So it is what it is. I mean, uh, it's kind of like we need to stop with the complaining and just l- l- let it go because we can't change it well, now, it's, right? It's it's not as, it's, it's as much as people are unhappy with the product. That's what it is. I mean, it's easy to say, okay, you have to let people, you, people have to let it go, people have to stop complaining. But if you're saying that, you might as well tell people, okay, you have to, you have to deal with this. You don't really have to deal with it. But if you, if you're gonna start somewhere, and I know, and I know from reading this, they were felt, oh well, the heat that Daniel Bryan had or had when he was going, when he got eliminated, or that the company had when he was when he got eliminated, may lead to a triple threat match. I'm glad they're, I'm glad, at least I'm glad with WWE, they're sticking with this and they're not backtracking and doing a repeat of last year. 
because then that's just being just flat out. You're just backtracking. You're trying to fix it. So I will give them credit to that. They're sticking with their gut. But the best thing they can do going from here on to towards WrestleMania is fixing this with with a better card. Is giving us is giving people what they want to see for that event. Well, hopefully they have something planned for us and some good matches planned for us on the road to WrestleMania. Uh, coming fast lane, you know that's when shit really starts. So, um, all I know. Did is you have I, any um, more uh, thoughts before uh, we let you go? Um, all I know is Rusev versus Cena. Oh God. Why do I have a feeling this is going to end up looking like a Rocky story? Why, why do I have that feeling right now? You know, I, I have think, something to I say about every, that. I think everybody has that feeling, and it's. I have something to say it, about that, it, and I. It, oh, it, you guys! The, all you guys might not agree with me on this one. I know everybody's complaining about Rusev and Messina, but the same people who are complaining about Rusev and Messina were complaining about John Cena being in the main event. Guess what? John Cena's not in the main event right now. And now we're still complaining about John Cena. Okay. Uh, let, me, to, let me bring up a counterpoint to that. Look at what happened last year. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. We think it's going to be this uh, this great feud. It's going to elevate Bray Wyatt even more. Bray Wyatt's coming into that feud as one of the one of the hottest newcomers into the WWE. He's being built up as a as a monster and this cult leader. And what happens at WrestleMania? LOL, Cena wins. And then, okay, why wins a payback in uh, Extreme Rules in, in a crappy cage match? Okay, and then Cena wins a payback. What was the point of feuding with Cena? It only de-elevated Wyatt. And Wyatt really hasn't recovered fully since feuding with John Cena. Unless WWE has a really, really big plan for you, and I don't really think they do. Unless it's a face-versus-face face dynamic and you feud with Cena, you're not coming out on the other end looking better than when you first came in. It's not going to work unless they put Rusev over, which they won't because Cena is the golden boy and they're going to protect him at all costs. It's that simple. I will, I will say this, seeing that we're on the subject of, of Bray Wyatt, I think an Undertaker and Bray Wyatt view would be gold for WrestleMania. And I honestly think that would be a gold one. That's what it's looking like going to happen, too. But we'll see. Um, did you want to cover anything else before we continue to, uh, the show, bro? Uh, no, that's about it. I'm going to let you guys go on with the show. Um, thanks for taking my call. Thanks for allowing me to get on to um, share my thoughts, actually. Yeah, man. It's always uh, good hearing you here back home here on WH Radio, man. Yeah, hopefully um, hopefully by next week I can, hopefully soon I'll come back. I can come back on or something, you know, join you guys for a show soon or something. Definitely, bro. All right, y'all take care. Take it easy, man. All right. All right, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our boy WH Matt, aka Matt Lari. Um, he used to be uh, on the show with us a while back. Uh, for those that did not know, he's the homie. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue uh, the show here. We were in the middle of talking about that Ascension uh, match. Let's go ahead and um, go ahead and get to. Uh, Next matchup, uh, which uh, was a which which was a, another uh, tag team match. It was uh, the Miz and Miz Dow against the Usos, and I thought that was not that bad. Uh, I know these guys wrestle a lot raw, but these guys did not have a bad match. Reviews you guys that show up more. Um, you know, they bring more out, and I thought they had a good taxi match, uh, that's my opinion. Uh, of course, the Usos got the win. Uh, we did not see a, uh, Miz, uh, 
or Miz Dow, you know, confrontation in the match. Uh, but um, let's run down everybody real quick and get everybody's thoughts on the matchup. Uh, let's start with you, Oscar. Yeah, it was, the match was all right. Um, I was looking for the breakup, but it didn't happen. But there was a couple of things that shows you that the breakup is coming. That before the match started, they showed a little video footage of those two, and then he mentioned when I win the rumble, you know, yeah, yeah. Now he's showing uh, Damian Sandow looking at him like, okay, you know, <laughs> and all this stuff. But then that match or that match, I didn't see no tease or no breakup. But then when you when, then when the Royal Rumble happened, then you see it. So that's all pretty much I gotta say. But um, now the question is, when will the breakup happen? Will it happen in fast lane? Will it happen next week on Raw? That's the question. Now it is when the breakup is going to happen. We know it's coming, but when it's going to happen? Definitely. Uh, Tom, you want to go ahead and uh, share your thoughts? Yeah, I thought I thought this match was okay. Uh, kind of a basic tag team match. Nothing. Nothing really extraordinary, nothing bad. Um, for me, it was just kind of like we, we, we've seen these two teams face off so much the past few months that it just it was just kind of bland. It's, we've seen them before. We've seen them go at it so many times. It's run its course. It's ran its course, you know, months ago. Um, they should have really built up to this match. But nonetheless, it was just still a solid tag team match. Of course, you know, Mizdow was over like crazy. That Philly crowd loved him. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where Miz and Mizdow go and what happens with the Usos now. So, we'll probably get more answers as Fast Lane gets closer. And then by then, we'll know probably what to do with these two teams. Definitely, definitely. Um, Matt? Um, it was very interesting. I, I agree with you, Skits. I didn't mind their matchup, but not too well, not too bad of a matchup, even though they've had quite a few matchups. But um, the Miz, Mizdow thing, obviously coming to an end, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Are they actually going to get that Mania match, or are they just going to blow it off at Fastlane? We're going to have to see. Yeah, uh, with, I'm pretty sure all of us was just waiting for Miz to go ham on Miz Dow or either Miz Dow to be fed up and just take off on Miz. Pretty sure it's going to happen soon. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward and let everybody know what happened uh, at the Rumble. Of course, Miz was number one. Uh, he was in for a while, and he got eliminated. But then later on, Miz Dow came down, and, you know, the Miz came down. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you know, I guess because he's a stunt, you know, guy, you know, you're not supposed to be in, but he got in anyways, and uh, he finally got kicked out, and uh, The Miz was upset, and, you know, that kind of was a little tease right there, too, but um, we'll see what happens with those two. Um, probably Thursday on SmackDown, maybe the tease a little something there. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Um, next matchup, Divas Action. This matchup, not bad either. I know uh, a lot of us, we always shit on the Divas, but uh, you got Natalia and Paige, two of the best Divas, and you got Bree and Nikki Bella. I would say the D- I would say uh, the Bella Twins are back in effect, like really back, like as the Bella Twins, because they actually came out with their old, you know, intro and all that shit, and basically this uh, their full hill. Uh, Bree's back to being a hill, looks like. So um. I gotta give uh, the Divas credit. It was a good match uh, last night. Um, but uh, our the uh, fucking Bellas got the win uh, in that matchup. Uh, did you want to go ahead and uh, give your thoughts on that match, Oscar? Yeah, I was surprised the Bella got over it because I thought this would lead to a Divas title match between either from Paige or Natalia. That's that shocked me. So now, now that we handle, you know, Raw tonight, the question is, what is this paid off? What What is the Bellas going over them things off? Like, is this something that shows that the Bellas can't be stopped? Or what's going on here? Or are you trying to tease a breakup between Paige and 
Natalia, that's that's the question. Like we don't know what's gonna what's gonna move on. Or or, or planning some big A J Lee return, which I don't know if I wanna see another A J versus Vicky Bella match. <laughs> but um I don't know. That's 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 a head scratcher and, and probably we'll find out more next week when Raw comes back in. Or maybe Thursday the Thursday night live SmackDown. Yeah, man. I guess uh, Skits' thing uh, got off. Uh, Tom, what's your thought on the match? I thought it was. I thought it was a. Uh, I don't want to say good Divas match because I I think it could have been better, but for a Divas tag match, it was pretty good. Um, I think the Bellas, you know, people shit on them, on them, including myself, but they definitely both have improved in the ring. They're not as bad as they once are. Um, and they can really only get better with stepping in there with girls like Paige and Natalia. So I like that aspect. Um, and I, I was just as surprised that Paige and Natalia didn't get the win. I thought, you know, this is a total divas kind of storyline thing. And I thought Paige and Natalia were going to win. So definitely it was a little surprising to see the Bellas win it. But hopefully this leads to something uh, good for the Divas division moving forward, and um, hopefully we get a we get a decent Divas match at WrestleMania, not like a Battle Royal or something. You know, I know they want to get the Divas all on there so they can get a paycheck, but if you're going to do you know like a Divas Battle Royal or something, you can do it on the pre-show and make it for a number one contenders match. I want um, a Divas Gala for, match. Yeah, you could do that, and then on the main show you can have, um, you know, a Divas title match. You could have a fatal four-way between Nikki, Brie, uh, Natalia, and Paige, and I think that would be, uh, I, yeah, I think that would be a good fatal four-way match to have. And I can't remember the last. When was the last time the the Divas or the women's title was actually defended at WrestleMania? It's been a while. Last year. Oh well, in, I met in uh, in like a one-on-one match, not like hmm. a battle. WrestleMania. That's a good question. I have to look that up. Well, uh, the last relevant up. match, the last relevant match I remember from for a women's title match at WrestleMania was Trish Stratus and Mickey James. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, um, I, I'm kind of with you guys in a way. Uh, I'm kind of shocked with the Bellas winning that match, but. I think you guys are forgetting about something. I think by WrestleMania time, uh, the current NXT Women's Champion Charlotte will be called up because I feel like she's going to lose her championship in that four-way. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and while while I wouldn't mind seeing Charlotte up on the main roster, and Charlotte's improved leaps and bounds since she's first debuted on NXT, and she, she's done it in such a short time. I feel like I don't want her on the main roster because I don't feel like she's going to be treated the, the way that you know, Divas are treated on NXT. They're treated with respect, and they're treated like legitimate competitors on NXT on the main roster. It's like they're an afterthought, and I wouldn't want that. I don't think they're going to treat Ric Flair's daughter like that, man. Yeah, that's, what I said. that's Ric Flair's daughter, and you know, Triple A, you know, um, Ric Flair has that relationship, and, you know, Vince and, you know, Rick, they have that great relationship. And plus, they also fix what they had on one Raw with Charlotte and, uh, and Natty, uh, when basically, when, you know, they can finish, they can bring that back as a few. You, know, you got Charlotte come in as a heel and just attack Natalia. You want to, you know, get 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 the Divas, you know. And back in NXT, you know, you you got Sasha, you know, she can carry that that uh, division. She's improved well, and you got Becky Lynch who's doing well over there, and you also have um, uh, Bailey who just turned. I mean, we're not sure if she turns if she turned Hill all the way, but she's definitely a great wrestler, and they got the one more girl in that mix if they really want uh the the uh their division in NXT to be a success. 
Yeah, I feel I'm I'm thinking maybe Carmella is gonna be a girl that could be added into that mix. Um, maybe once Charlotte does go onto the main roster, kinda what about Carmella Blue sneaks her way into the title scene. Well You said who? I don't know I don't know about I don't know if I wanna piss you off, Tom, but I was hearing a little bit, bit that if Charlotte goes on to the main roster, I heard that that Triple H really likes um, the fairy chick, um, Alexa Bliss, and oh, maybe yeah. they'll push I forgot, her. I forgot about her. She's pretty good. Yeah, I maybe they'll push her at, when when Charlotte leaves. So she, that could be a possibility. So, but we'll see though. Because lately they haven't really put on that much, and if you want to push her, I think now is the time to do it. What is she on, like, the Rookie of the Year type shit on um, that Dave Melcher, uh thing that we were talking about? Yeah, the Glass Liver Awards, yeah. 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 I think so. But like I said, if, you, if they're going to push her, they better do it now. Because I don't think Charlotte's going to be in the, the NXT for a while. I'd say after Mania, she's going into the main roster. That's when Puck and Page came in. Ha, ha, ha. But uh, yeah. But yeah, next match uh, was basically the WWE Heavyweight Championship match. You got Brock Lesnar, the Beast, going against John Cena against my boy Seth Rollins, and the fucking star of this match. I don't care if he lost, my boy Seth Rollins, straight up Beast mode. Um, where do I start? <laughs> this guy says like WWE. Guys, just fucking open up way um, wide, like, wow, we didn't know uh, this guy got it like that, like, how about that fucking leap from uh, the top of the pole onto the uh, table where he broke Brock Lesnar's ribs, Um, and then then, later on, quote, well, you know what I mean, Um, anyways, uh, then later on, you know, uh, that crazy move he did uh, on top of uh, the ropes uh, when he landed on John Cena, that was crazy, too. Uh, Seth Rollins is just amazing, dude. Like, I- I've said this before. I've been praising this guy for a while on the show. That is your next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Plan B is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let you guys talk. Uh Somebody just go ahead. Well, Plan B. Are you saying that he's cashing in the money in the bank pretty soon? Is that what? That's what Plan B is. If hey, I'm definitely not talking about Plan B after you knock up a check. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> hey, I think Magic Grant had a worse on the uh, easy power rankings, but oh well. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, um, if I was the WWE and if Roman Reigns is getting booed at WrestleMania, I will use it at WrestleMania because I think that would, that would be the perfect time to do it at a WrestleMania. But we'll see what happens if uh, whenever Seth Rollins is using it because it's gonna be it's kind of it's the biggest mystery when he's gonna do it. It's been, especially a bit harder since. Brock Lesnar, he doesn't show up every Raw, so that's what happens. And um, going back to that uh, match, that triple threat match, it was a great match. There was a lot of spots I liked, like while well, Seth Rollins, that I, I like the part when he jumped and Brock Lesnar caught him to an F5. I, that one was I crazy like too. So yeah, amazing. Crazy. <laughs> this guy, let's not some Kanye here on right now. But anyway, Ethan Page is having an <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> oh shit! Hey, m- remember who? You all know who his girlfriend is. So come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Tom saw that video so many times. But anyway, um, <laughs> of course. course. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he said, of course. But anyway, no shame to that, from Tom. But um, I was not shame to say that was a good match. I, that was probably the best match of the night. And, yeah, I'm going to my pass it on to the song there. That triple threat match, I can't remember the last time I was really 
except for WrestleMania because WrestleMania matches I think everybody's usually invested in, but a non-WrestleMania main event match that I was just so invested in. Usually with multi-man matches in WWE, it can, it can become kind of clustered or someone sits out of the ring for too long and it just kind of slows down, but I really enjoyed this triple threat match. Um, I think all three guys just went out there and busted their ass, even Cena. You know, Cena, he pulled out the Michinoku driver. He was pulling out some new stuff. He was looking pretty good. He was actually, he was selling better last night than I had seen him sell in a, in a while. So I can uh, uh, applaud Cena on that end. Um, of course, like everyone's been saying, Seth Rollins, the, the the complete MVP of that match. I mean, uh, when Brock Lesnar German suplexed him, he he didn't even look like Dolph Ziggler selling. He just looked like he was thrown out of a car. He looked like he died, and that's just how great he is uh, selling and telling a story in the ring. Um, and then when he busted out that Phoenix Splash, I can't remember the last time I I, I marked out for a, a single maneuver. Um, just to see him look at that turnbuckle and then he turns back and hits that Phoenix Flash. I was I was going pretty crazy and Philly was going nuts. The ending to that match was um, some great stuff. Uh, this was I think this was just I don't want to say um, a, a match of the year so far because um, it's only been um, not even a month. And I know I didn't I didn't enjoy this as you know Nakamura and Abushi or Tanahashi and Okada, but it was still a, a pretty awesome match. Um, like I said, Seth Rollins comes out looking like a million bucks. Lesnar was the man is a million bucks. He is. I mean, it, he WWE has to know that they, this guy is going to stay with the company for a long time. I mean. He he's getting he's getting so much better on the microphone too. He's getting a lot lot better than when he first came up. Um, mm-hmm. And I I think he's only he can only get better. And I think he's also a guy that um, he could be a, a really likable face once he turns. I think he's a guy that a lot of people can get behind pretty easily. So we've seen that in NXT. In the past, so I 100% agree with you. There. NXT, they were super behind him too, and it was a whole different type of Seth Rollins over there. He was NXT. He was doing all, um, basically the move that he did last night. He used that move a lot in NXT. Yeah, um, yeah Phoenix hopefully. Flash. And can I just say, Michael Cole is a fucking idiot. Tonight, when he was interviewing Seth Rollins, he was like, "Last night, when you hit that corkscrew moonsault, I was like, are you fucking stupid?" Like, yeah, even like, and then even Seth Rollins, me, even me as an amateur broadcaster, I could have called that one. Come on, Michael Cole, what's wrong with you? And then, and I just loved when Seth Rollins was like, "Well, Michael Cole, it's actually called a Phoenix Splash," and he he just shut Michael Cole completely down. I loved it. Um, but yeah, Seth Rollins looks like a million bucks. Lesnar, Lesnar is a monster. It's funny because I was talking with. Uh, one of my friends who actually went to the Rumble last night, and he said he hadn't seen Brock Lesnar in a while. He And he didn't have, you know, front row seats or anything, but from where he was sitting, he said he forgot how big uh, of a human being Brock Lesnar is in person. He says, if I was sitting in front row, I, I thought I would have shit my pants on how big the guy is. He's just intimidating. He's a freak of nature. And like I said, I even have to give props to Cena. So I think this was a pretty awesome match and definitely a WWE match of the year candidate when we look back at the end of the year. Now for me to step in here, um, the first thing I want to say is not in the history of the money in the bank. I don't think anybody's been booked better than Seth Rollins. That's that's one thing I want to point out because I don't think uh, that's been really noted. Now, the second thing I want to point out, Seth Rollins, yes, the MVP of this match, 100%. No disagreements from me there. But a very, very close second is Brock Lesnar. The intensity, the the reality that he brought into this contest was just absolutely insane. Cena did a very fantastic job as well. Just all three men 
uh, brought a fantastic structure to this match. There was just a great amount of psychology in this match. Such a great contest. And uh, like uh, Tom was saying, they're definitely a WWE Match of the Year candidate. I, I really, really appreciated a match like this. Yeah, yeah man. It, um, it's weird because imagine if Seth Rollins was never added to this matchup, what it would have been. It would have been a typical scene of versus Brock match. It wouldn't have been bad, but I don't think it would have been at this level of uh, of a type of match. And Matt, you're I mean you're completely right. I've been I've been kind of saying it as much as we've been saying how WWE doesn't push this guy or they're misusing that guy. One guy they've been protecting and making look like a complete and total star is Seth Rollins. And I think people, Seth Rollins I think is people a man. forget. I think people forget about that. You know, Seth Rollins, he, he he's a talented guy, and he's an indie star. You know, everybody knows his days in Ring of Honor and all over the indie scene. Um, so while we do complain about that, we do have to give some credit where credit is due in the booking of Seth Rollins ever since he turned on the Shield. The yeah, booking man. of Seth Rollins uh, has been insane. It's it's crazy. I mean, just like you said, Tom. Um, for those that are listening, just letting you guys know. Next week, first week of February, here on Wrestling Heads Radio, we will reveal our top 100 of the year. And I wonder if Seth Rollins is on that list. We will find out next week, the first week of February, Mondays and Fridays. So hopefully we can get it done. If we don't, we will definitely get it done. But uh, Seth Rollins is that dude. And like Nate. Seth, Seth Rollins is a fucking man. No, no fucking disagreements here. For once in our life, me and Nathan actually agree on something. There's <laughs> but, something um, I want to throw in here quickly. Um, I think, honestly, uh, there's rumors that the WWE is trying to pull 180 from what they did with Roman and Brock, although this was before I saw tonight's segment, so let's just throw that out there, that they were trying to pull 180 and possibly do a shield triple threat at WrestleMania. So maybe Seth Rollins cashes in sooner than we think. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I think regardless of what happens, I'm still going to say it, and I'm probably going to say it leading up to WrestleMania. I think Seth Rollins walks out of California and WrestleMania WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Regardless I would have mine. I All I gotta say, get ready to see your boy on Snapchat, on fucking video, all that shit, on Wrestling Heads Twitter. I'm going ham, and everybody that follows us, including my boy Matt here, will see you too, Tom. You guys will see how nuts I am going to go. And if it's a lot of disagreements, you will see me booing the shit out of Roman Reigns, throwing, throwing trash in the fucking ring. Yes, I will be that fan. So um, <laughs> um um I don't know if you want to go to a San Francisco jail here, so just let me tell you that. I told him not to. I'm just saying. I, told not to. <laughs> I I thought they were gonna start throwing trash in the ring last night. Uh, I I was I was waiting for it. I was expecting it. I was a little disappointed that it didn't happen actually. I heard a lot of shit happen in the parking lot though. Yeah, <laughs> actually, well, yeah. you guys, you guys wouldn't believe this, but a lot uh, of positive things happen more than negative things, from what I've read. Yeah, I, I heard this like one one bad thing happened, but m- majority stuff was good. Like cause some of the uh, girls and guys, you know, they were positive with the fans. So it was just one guy that was acting like an idiot. Doesn't surprise me. There's always got to be that one idiot. <laughs> But uh, how about let's talk about the World Rumble real quick um, on some of the surprises and, you know, I'd say out of all the people in the Royal Rumble, if I had to choose an MVP in the Royal Rumble, it was definitely Bray Wyatt. Oh, yeah. Bray Wyatt got a CM Punk Royal Rumble moment. Yeah, pretty much he did. Uh, and not bad for his first Royal Rumble appearance. Yeah, I was actually, I was a little bit surprised that they decided to go that route and have Wyatt dominate like that. Uh, I I liked it. I liked that they um, are possibly taking Wyatt seriously again. 
so I, I was I was definitely down for it. Yeah, the thing that really bothered me about the whole Bray Wyatt situation though is the way he got thrown out, man. It was like fucking sailors throwing trash over the, the to the sea, man. It, oh. it was just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, you could say that about what what happened to you know three or four other guys that should have you know had better rumble. Ziggler, Ambrose, yeah. Cesaro. I, I even think Daniel Bryan could have been eliminated better. Um, I mean, well, yeah, but it wasn't a big spot at all. Yeah, it, it just felt like nothing. It, it didn't feel like a big deal. And, and to have the fucking Kane and Big Show in, in the final four, I, I it w- once Daniel Bryan got eliminated, I, I can remember talking with people last night. It was like the excitement was gone. The Rumble match, which no matter how bad WWE is from year to year. The Rumble match you always get excited for. It's just one of those things. Everybody's excited for the Rumble. Everyone loves the concept. You get excited for the surprise uh, appearances. You get surprised on who is going to do good or what, regardless of the outcome. My but thing is, booking... whose fucking choice was to have Big Show and fucking King in the Final Four? Like, people give a fuck about them. Like, once why we saw it, they were in the Final Four, we knew what the fuck was going to happen. Why is it when the Royal Rumble comes around, why does WWE pretend like these giants can't be thrown over the top rope? It's one of the most annoying things, one of my biggest pet peeves about the WWE. I don't know. It, it, the, this this Rumble match just, it, it, it pissed me off. It they insulted everything. It insulted yeah, they it threw insulted everything at the beginning, and that's yeah. the problem. And you know, in the beginning, I was I was pretty hyped up. You know, even though it started out with Miz and Art Truth, it was a little bit funny. And then uh, Bubba Ray comes out, and we see the Boogeyman and Bray Wyatt's dominating, and all these and all these different things. And then once Daniel Bryan got eliminated, it was just like the 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 the, the, the fun of the match was just sucked out. No more excitement. You know what was going to happen. You know, right after that, I didn't care. I was kind of checking back and forth on the, uh, you know, on, on on the rumble just to see what was going on, and I was just I was kind of listening more than watching. I was listening to a, a chorus of boos from Philadelphia for, you know, fifteen straight minutes, twenty minutes. It, it's just absolutely ridiculous that mm-hmm. we, we get we get insulted like this. And I think I think John Pollock and uh, Jimmy Cordero said it right from law. I watched the Royal Rumble recap. The structuring of this Rumble, no matter the winner, you you could have made the Rumble still good even though the winner. The yeah. structuring of the Rumble was absolutely awful. It was. It was one of the worst structured Rumbles, if not the worst structured Rumble I'd ever seen. You know, Daniel Bryan's early elimination. Mm. Dolph Ziggler coming in at 30. Nothing happened with him. You could have made Luke Harper look even better, too. He had a little crappy elimination because of Eric Rowan. Um, you know what? Let's talk about that real quick. He just brought, brought up Luke. Um, how about when it looked like at a minute that I actually thought this was going to happen. I thought Luke Harper and Eric Rowan were just going to go out to break. It would have been... Crazy that actually happened, uh, but we know Luke and Bray basically, you know, this destroy Eric Rowan. Uh, I tr- I truly felt after reading that interview from Bray Wyatt a couple months ago, I truly felt last night we were going to see the Wyatt family get back together. I I was like marking out for a second. I fully had the intention, or I should say, they had the intention of putting the Wyatt family back together, and then they just kind of blew it. That would. You know, back looking back at it, all I have to say, Bray Wyatt's one funny dude. The way he laughed when they both like pointed at him, like Bray Wyatt's one funny character. I love that dude. Huh? <laughs> he is, and then and that when the when the boogeyman came in and he was trying to act all freaky, and Wyatt just looking at him like, "You're a fucking idiot. I'm not fucking scared of you." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Eat all the worms you want. I'll take them. I'll probably eat them too." Wyatt's definitely just one of the best characters in WWE, and it's, it's mind-boggling that he has to, you know, kind of 
scratch back up to to being the monster that he was when he debuted it. Um, I think the company probably still has high hopes for him, and he's going to be you know a main eventer for years to come. Um, but just don't don't ruin just don't ruin the guy's character. Make him crazy, even when he's a face. You can still make him bad shit insane. Um, he's definitely just one of the most more interesting characters on the roster. I don't but, think this has been said enough. The improvement that he's had since the Husky Harris character is just unbelievable. You know, I was thinking about that. Yeah. I was thinking about that because when they said Bray Wyatt's first Royal Rumble, I'm, I'm looking back like, wasn't Husky Harris in the Rumble? <laughs> but I know it's two different <laughs> characters. <laughs> I know it's two different yeah. characters, but um, uh, and just looking like, I'm like, this guy really took time out on his character. Like, he grew his hair out. Like, it looked like he had a couple tattoos. Like, this guy is probably, out of all wrestlers in professional wrestling right now, he takes his fucking character really serious. And I respect that about uh, Bray Wyatt. And I'm still jealous of fucking Oscar because he, cause, cause he met the whole Wyatt family. You bastard. In a time where Be jealous. Uh, it's really hard. <laughs> wow, what a Miz and Morrison reference there. But uh, in a time where be uh, jealous, it's really hard. Jealous too. <laughs> in a time where it's really hard to keep kayfabe alive, this is one of those times where Bray Wyatt is just 100% amazing with that. He's like you said, Skits, he's probably one of the best characters, if not the best character in wrestling right now outside of The Undertaker. Yeah, because I know when, I, I mean, I know I just mentioned about Oscar meeting Why, and he said the whole time that Bray was serious, like the whole time he stayed in character. He didn't out of character, like how when you meet some wrestlers, well, you're out of character. Well, actually, actually, Bray wasn't, but the guy who was really staying in character was actually Eric Rowan. So he kind of like looked at me and stared at me and all that. She's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Does but he walk around with the sheet mask on? No, he had the sheet mask like uh, on his head. He wasn't wearing it. He had a teddy, but he kept looking at me like he wanted to kill me or something. Like, okay, Cause I, but I was just joking with um, Bray. I remember I was telling Bray that you guys did a good job. You guys were making me pay my um, my bills and stuff. You know, you guys are the reason why I'm paying my. Uh, satellite bill or something and I remember he said something like yeah you keep paying the man you keep doing your job man or something like that you know <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to segue into Luke Harper going yeah 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 nah he didn't do it but he, he, he wanted me to he just did like the the old indie thing buy his shirt buy the Wyatt family shirt <laughs> I didn't expect him to do that the Michael like, am I a PW shirt oh you can say that but I was like, what the hell, am I a PWG show? It's fucking Luke Harper thinks he's fucking Brody Lee or something? Come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I I know we're going to get into it, and I I think I'm just going to bring it up. You got to feel for Roman Reigns, man. Um, As much as, you know, he's not the guy to push, he's not the greatest in the ring, and he's, he has been busting ass since he got injured to try and improve himself. And if it wasn't Daniel Bryan, it wasn't anybody. Nobody gave a fuck about it. Yeah, and I, after watching um, the fallout last night when he was backstage with The Rock, I think he was he was visibly annoyed. He was like that all this was put on him. You know, he was the one getting booed. He's in there with The Rock, that the people love The Rock. And when you have people booing the shit out of The Rock, there's something wrong. There's something wrong there. It's not right because everybody loves The Rock. You know, he's one of the the biggest wrestlers in history. And when, pe- when he comes back, he gets the biggest pop, and people, you know, reminisce about it. So to have people boo The Rock says a lot about what they were doing. He probably didn't want to be in that situation. You know, um, I'm sure he didn't like it. He was probably uncomfortable. And being, you know, a new guy up on the roster and it's his first really big win in the company, he was probably really uncomfortable. He probably just wanted to get out of there. Yep, I, I agree. Another thing to be noted, man, 
what the hell was with WWE pretty much, pretty freaking much, uh, assuming that The Rock was going to be in the Royal Rumble. The whole night they were pretty much insinuating that he was going to be in, and he just comes in at the end. Like, it was, that kind of annoyed me a little bit. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on that. Well, now that we look back at it, I don't think they were hyping him up for the Rumble. I think we should have just seen that they were hyping him up to congratulate Roman Reigns. We should have seen it coming. Well, after when Daniel Bryan was let me, I was hoping, oh, shit, maybe they're going to have to rock win the Rumble. Maybe he'll enter number 30 and just eliminate people, and he, and he wins the Rumble. And maybe that shit I told you guys earlier about, that trip, that original idea was supposed to be Rock versus Brock Lesnar for the damn WWE title at WrestleMania. Then all of a sudden I saw Dolph Ziggler at number three. I was like, okay, so what's all this rock bullshit happening? Okay, he's got there to save Roman Reigns pretty much because he, er, they knew backstage he was going to get booed. They knew it. But with the whole rock just being there and still didn't help out, so I don't no. know. And it, I don't know what I, to do. I thought it was do. funny. Uh, I thought it was funny. All I had to I say. All I have to Go say ahead. is I wonder what's 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 next for Reigns. How are the fans going to treat him now after them leaving Philly? Is it going to be mutual? Is it be the same? Um, that's the big question mark now. Well, I think we can get into that after we get into Raw because I feel like uh, Reigns, although from what I've heard, apparently they were like audibly heard feeding him lines like right directly. I, I guess I'm going to have to listen into that and apparently hear that, because apparently that's what people were tweeting about, but uh, we can get into that a little bit later. Reigns, you just, I, I, I feel like you got to feel for him, and that's that's how I, I kind of feel yeah. for him at this point. I think he was yeah. just stuck in a bad situation, and Real quick. I, I find it funny, I was reading, you know, after the Rumble was over, there was reports coming out from, like, Dave Meltzer, and all these uh, different websites, that there was, uh, it was quiet backstage, a lot of people were just, a lot of wrestlers and talent were just quiet. You know, there was excitement, uh, like, yeah, we just put on a great show. It was just like, it was awkwardness. It was just people kind of being somber. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of, a lot of frustration. In, apparently one of those backstage dirty, and I, I think, apparently I one mean, of those Roman dirty reporters. probably, like, frustrated as hell. Because it's his big moment, and he got he gets shitted on. But how did WWE not see this coming? And they knew he was going to get booed. They knew it because why else would you send the Rock out there? Why else to try and drown out the booze? But it didn't work. Why would you even have to do that? It is it is ridiculous that they have to do that. Why not just give the fans what they want? Why? Like, why do you have to shove this guy down our throats? You know, you, you don't see, you, I don't see this anywhere else in any company, in any industry. When not, people, only are they, not only are they putting the fans in an awkward position, they're putting him in an awkward position, man. It's just a terrible situation for both yeah. companies. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. He's, he's probably really passionate about this business and he wants to succeed and he wants to do good and he wants to help the company, but then you put him in a position like that, he probably feels like shit about himself. He probably feels like, you know, he's in, in, in the weirdest position, and it's just like, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't see this in any hey, other Tom. company, in any industry. Where... I feel your frustration, Tom. I feel it. I feel it, bro. <laughs> it's uh, just, it is just real ridiculous. quick, real quick. Let's take a real quick break, man. And let's let's get into some raw talk. Let me take a commercial real quick. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. We just happen to be the best tag team on planet Earth, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Hello, friends. This is Matt Seidel. You are using your brain and listening to Wrestling Heads. Respect. Hey, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Was that the first time you played the Matt Seidel one, huh? Um, I'm pretty sure we played it on. It's probably the first time here on Elite Podcast Network, but we played it before. Um, but yeah, uh, Raw tonight. 
uh, really with the raw that we watch every Monday night. Uh, tonight was more of a replay of last night, minus a couple matches. Um, so whoever doesn't have the network, uh, you got a free per review. But tonight it was some interviews, some one-on-one interviews that were uh, taking place. Seth Rollins had a one-on-one interview, basically talking about his match last night. Of course, we we talked about it a little bit, uh, and uh, basically, you know, he basically uh, just told Michael Cole, uh, you know, um, there's always a plan B, and uh, and just like we said earlier, uh, Seth Rollins is definitely looking like uh, the man right now, and uh, the right way to go is Seth Rollins. Um, the interview was great, in my opinion. I think Seth Rollins is doing good. And um, this, did you guys want to share thoughts on that interview? The only thing I wanted to throw out there is he tweeted something like, uh, "There's a light at the end of the tunnel." I don't know if that's referencing, you know, people being down and him cashing in kind of deal, but that's kind of what it seems like it's referencing. That's really only. Uh, thoughts I have because I haven't quite got the chance to see that yet. See, and it's and it's funny because Seth Rollins is supposed to be the biggest heel in the company, but when he cashes in and wins that title, he's going to turn into like the biggest face in the company because everyone's that's, just going to love that he's champion. Yeah, you know what? That's that's how I have to feel if he does cash in at WrestleMania. You know. Reigns win the title, they're going to boo him. Seth Rollins comes out, everybody's going to cheer him. So it's going to be kind of weird, you know. Will we see a little turn, uh, twist off, you can say? <laughs> I'm not talking about the beer, but we can say like back in uh, 1999 with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair in WCW, which one night Hogan was the heel and Flair was the face, and it switched off to Hogan being the face, Ric Flair the heel. Who knows? But that interview looks like he is it sounds like he is planning to cash it in. So, who knows when. The question when. is, what if he stays healed, though? What if he stays healed and they still cheer him and he still talks shit to the fans? It, it won't matter. <laughs> he can talk all the yeah, It doesn't matter. And then they'll, they'll love it. They'll eat it up. It's like, I, I feel it's like kind of like when the Young Bucks. Not if you're like, a kid. Like the, Bucks, like the Young Bucks like talk shit to all, all these wrestling fans and they just love it. Um, it's just in this, that's what it is <clears throat> with WWE is they build up their faces and then they they're, they're they're like heels because people just don't like how WWE portrays their faces and then that makes the heels look like faces. It's just it, it's a really weird dynamic with how WWE likes to build up its characters. It's definitely. Definitely a little odd. Yeah, I I definitely get where you guys are coming from. It's just that you know, kids, the kids are still gonna call him a sellout. You know, you know a lot of it's still a lot of shield marks out there, even though the shield is not, you know, active right now. But you guys apparently are saying, right? uh there's a report, sorry to kind of throw us off topic here, but I'm sure it's going to get brought up. Apparently there's a report that Vince McMahon is completely sold on Daniel Bryan. Finally. <laughs> I guess. I, I don't believe it. Okay, I'll believe it if somehow he gets in the main event as, as, a, as a triple threat match somehow. But, uh, Another one? Thought, yeah, he's shocked. See, that's the problem. That's the problem is even if Daniel Bryan gets inserted into the WWE title match, it's the same thing as last year. It doesn't have the same type of effect. With if Daniel Bryan won the Rumble, it would have been a good it would have been a good feel moment. Uh, Daniel Bryan wins at WrestleMania, and you know what? I don't give a fuck if Seth Rollins would have cashed in. I would have loved it if Seth Rollins cashed in on Daniel Bryan and won, because then Seth, Seth Rollins would have been the biggest heel in the company. Everyone would have hated him for ruining Daniel Bryan's moment. Um, that's that is how it should have been done. But you know, what I do guess I know? Vince. I guess Vince is surprised that 
Brian's been able to maintain his momentum throughout everything. You know, it's crazy that you just said that. If you want Daniel Bryan to face someone at WrestleMania, the right person, I know you talked about the show, uh, Triple Threat, the right way for him is to face at WrestleMania is Seth Rollins in a non-title match. Maybe. Maybe. And it would be, it would probably steal the show. And I... You I need one of those. Every that. year there's a, a show stealer match. Let's not forget Chris Jericho, CM Punk. That was a show stealer type of match that that um yeah. that that one year. You you need one show still match every year yeah. um at WrestleMania. Yeah, and like I pointed out last week, if Roman Reigns didn't win the Rumble, I don't know what's the the update on Sheamus. I was just kind of throwing it out there. I said Roman Reigns should face a heel Sheamus. That would have been a solid match. Two guys just brawling with each other, and you could have put Roman Reigns over. You know, I would have been okay with that. It would have been fine. Roman Reigns gets his first one-on-one victory at WrestleMania. He doesn't win the title. It would have been perfectly fine. But, you know, it's whatever. And going back to the whole Vince McMahon, Daniel Bryan thing, I don't know why he's so surprised. Daniel Bryan, it, it's just he's a likable character. He's a likable guy. He's, that's why people have been booing Cena for so many years, is that he doesn't he doesn't come off as this likable guy. You know, he just comes off as he's John Cena, hustle, loyalty, and respect, and all that. And it's with a lot of the older fans, it's just it's bullshit in that way. And we, we see that it's not, you know, a, a genuine guy. That's why w- when Sami Zayn comes up on onto the main roster, he's going to be one of the most over guys because he's just a likable character and a likable guy because of who he is. You know, that's why people loved El Generico. And it's, it's, it's the same person, basically, but without a mask. It's just it's everybody can get behind a character like that. You know, something you can relate to. Yeah. Um, did you guys want to share any more thoughts on that Vince McMahon comment, or you guys want to move on? I got nothing to say. <clears throat> Let's move on to the uh, other interviews. Uh, yeah, there was a one-on-one interview with Brock Lesnar. Um, you know, basically talking about the uh, Royal Rumble uh, main event last night and then it got into uh Roman Reigns short story basically said, you know, he's uh looking forward to meeting a guy. I know a damn well both um <laughs> I don't know at the same time. But um but uh later on that night to fast forward towards the end of Raw, uh both guys Got interviewed one on one. It was supposed to be Michael Cole interviewing him, but it ended up being Paul Heyman. And uh, Heyman basically brought up, you know, his family history, like how he knows his family, respects his family, and he said one thing that has not brought up is that your cousin, The Rock, when he faced uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, a beat was is is really not brought up, and he never asked for a rematch. Yeah, uh, I I liked both interviews with Lesnar. I think this is where Lesnar is more comfortable when he's talking on the microphone. When he's kind of in the ring, it can get a little bit awkward. But when he's in these sit-down interviews, I think he's more comfortable. He, he still comes off as this, you know, intimidating monster. And um, I thought he did a good job in both interviews. Um, and of course, you know Paul Heyman is just Paul Heyman. You don't even I don't even need to go into detail about him. Paul Heyman is incredible. Um, he's just I, I heard about this segment. I just I I know about the segment all about from Twitter and Heyman is just amazing. Uh, the fact that people weren't sold on this match pretty much beforehand 
And now people are pretty much, you know, all for this match just because of Paul Heyman. Just shows you how how much of an asset he is to the WWE product. Yeah, he for sure. And I, I, I feel like WWE needs to keep Heyman around a, a, as long as humanly possible. Because if he's not on TV, he could be down um, at the Performance Center teaching guys how to be a face or be a heel or how to talk. And he just has so much insight and knowledge. Um, he, he's just an, an iconic figure. I mean, when I, I don't want to say it because it's tough for me to say, but when we look back years later, he may be the greatest wrestling manager ever. Um, right now, I would say that title belongs to uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, but who knows? That opinion can change in time. Paul Heyman's definitely up there. Uh, I think it's one and two. I think Heenan's one and Heyman's two. Got no argument here. I don't, that's yeah, a very interesting here. conversation. How we could dedicate a whole episode to just talking about that. But uh, what else happened on Raw tonight? Um, uh, another interview uh, with Daniel Bryan, basically talking about uh, his loss. Um, him, him basically getting kicked out the Rumble, and uh, you know uh, his matchup uh, coming this Thursday. Uh, with Kane, he basically said that he was very upset uh, that Roman Reigns won. He did mention that, and he said he's not upset that it was Roman Reigns, but he's upset that it wasn't him. Uh, another thing that Daniel Bryan mentioned, he said this Thursday uh, he's ready to end this feud with Kane. He said he's sick. He's sick of it. He's tired of it. So. Um, this casket match may be the end of Daniel Bryan and Kane. Let's hope. Uh, so, for those that did not know, uh, Thursday you will see Kane versus Daniel Bryan in a casket match. Um, that's going down. So, they basically talked about that a little bit. And um, Not only that, but Thursday is a live SmackDown as well with all the Storm situation. Which is a good deal, too. So, um, I think I work Thursday. Ain't that a bitch? But, uh... But yeah, that's going down this Thursday. And uh there was a small interview also uh backstage uh with uh Dean Ambrose. You know, Dean Dean Ambrose is going you know how he's his character, he's supposed to be a crazy or whatever, so he just did a little small interview. Nothing really big. Uh that's all that really happened on Raw tonight. Nothing too big, just a lot of interviews. The interviews were good and I've I thought so but uh, I know uh, you guys I know you guys wanted to talk a little bit about wrestling cares and AWS as well over the weekend. I kinda wanted to throw a little bit of thoughts out about AAW as well. So if you guys wanted to uh throw some wrestling cares in AWS. If you want to go ahead and go first, uh go for it, because I know you were uh at AAW. Yeah, AAW uh Friday night, man. It was it was crazy. Um the main event Josh Alexander, Eddie Kingston. What more can you say about these guys, man? Uh, like I said on the commentary, two of the hardest-hitting guys in professional wrestling, and they just went out there and put everything on the table. Um, probably one of the best endings, too, I've seen to a match in a really, really long time. Um it was basically just them just clobbering each other, and Kingston had eventually hit his back fist on Alexander, and they kind of just both collapsed, and uh, Kingston laid on top of Josh for the pin. It was really cool how they did it. Um, the production from AAW, for them being an independent promotion, top-notch production. It's, I'm really looking forward to watching this show back on Smart Mark Video just to see how great the production is. The promos looked amazing. The matches were pretty good. Um, I posted a spot on my Instagram from the Hooligans Zero Gravity match. One of the Hooligans jumped off the balcony and crushed uh, one of the Zero Gravity members through a table. Um, Ethan Page and DJZ was really good. And Silas Young returned as well. 
So, I mean, really just an all-around great AAW show. Uh, I highly suggest checking it out when it gets released. Yeah, definitely. AAW doing big things at Chi-Town. Uh, you know, now it's Silas. I know last time when Silas was there, he was feuding with, I mean, like, shoot. Did I say that? Kill him. Eddie Kingston. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was feuding last time when I was watching it. Uh, so, uh, definitely looking forward to uh, oh, see what they got going thing. on. I totally forgot one more thing. My boy Tyler Thomas, he died. He uh, he went and did a tope over the rope and kind of uh, landed on the floor. Yeah, pretty brutal. Definitely yeah. Yeah. checking that out. But he's all good, so we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, fact, uh, hurt. <laughs> cheap little plug. Uh, recorded an on the road episode with Tyler Thomas and Monster Mafia on the way there, so uh, be on the lookout for that one. Definitely. Uh, for those that haven't heard of AAW, we'll give them a follow on Twitter at AAW Pro. Uh, one of the top indie promotions in the world. Look out for their shit. Um, where do I start with uh, wrestling cares? Uh, like the fucking event was so big, you're like making me go to my fucking Twitter to look at the results because the shit was so. It was a two day show. Uh, I'll just tell you this right now. It was a women's tournament for the Race to the Ring last year. There was, um, excuse me, two years ago, there was a Race to the Ring for, you know, all guys, and uh, Jenny Gargano got got that win. So he actually brought the bling uh, to the event, too, by the way. But, um, but yeah, uh, shocking. Uh, girls like Candice LeRae uh, was in it. Uh, uh, Taylor Hendricks. Uh, Christina Vineri, uh Rays out here from SoCal, uh, Brittany Wonder, uh, Nicole Savoy, uh, the list goes on. If you want to help me with some of these names, Oscar, you're more than welcome to jump in. Uh, but great, wom- great women's wrestling. Uh, it's basically how how the rules go for Race of the Rings. Basically, like an Iron Iron Woman or Iron Man match. Uh, they had like. I think the ladies had like ten minutes on the clock. So say for instance, you know, they had Candice LeRae and uh and uh Christina Vineri go at it. Uh Candice would get a fall, the match continues. Uh you know, you know, Christina would get a fall, the match continues. There was a cu- there was a couple of sudden deaths in there. I just thought all around that uh these girls uh definitely uh you know, show that they can hang just like the guys uh you know, can wrestle that long they can too. Um, Oscar, did you want to uh, talk about the uh, the tournament? Yeah, I'm gonna start with the women's one. Um, I was just like you, I was shocked uh, who won the tournament. I mean, I'm, I'm but I'm, ha- I'm but I'm sure you're happy that uh, Nicole Savoy actually won the tournament. Out of all the talent they had that, that was there, you know. Um, Damn, my girl Maria. Mar- Mariah Moreno didn't win. Sucks. No, she but she was, made the uh, finals, she, though. She, she made the finals. That's my girl. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you already got history with her already now. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently, uh, cheap plug, last week's Indie Power Rankings Live, I got told I don't know how to eat pussy. That is all, folks. <laughs> that was a fun show, by the way. And uh, yeah. it's funny... I don't know why I'm telling you guys the story, but Mariah, uh, I was, I um, basically uh, introduced myself to her, and uh, I was like, uh, how you doing? Um, you were on the Indie Power Ranking show, and uh, I was on there, I, I was uh, one of the guys who were talking to you, so, oh, okay, okay, and I was like, but I'm not the guy that uh, that uh, can't eat pussy. She was like, I hope not, she was like, but I'm pretty sure you're, uh, you're here. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> and, um, oh, yeah, God. she said that. Uh, I was there and I heard that. So. <laughs> All I know is Mariah's one funny lady. Um, she's, she's, she has some fucking physical type of magic because this chick, she would fucking chop you in the chest like, she, she definitely has some good matches though, but, 
overall, uh, Chris, uh, she made the finals. Uh, the final three was uh, Hannah. Uh, what, hold on. Uh, what's the, the name? Howling uh, Hunters? Yeah. Yeah. Her yes. Her. Yes. Yeah, her, I've seen her before. Uh, She's really good. Yeah. Uh, her, the Nicole Savoy, and um, Mariah were the final three. And uh, it was a good match. All I know is Nicole Savoy is probably, out of all the females I've seen wrestle, she uses a lot of submissions. She's like uh, the Kyle O'Reilly version of uh, chicks. Uh, always using, uh, you know, hoes and stuff. And I so she literally gave you a reason? I fell in love with her just, just right to that. <laughs> Because uh, for those that know, I'm I'm a big uh, Kyle Riley fan, and I'm a big technical type of you know wrestling fan. So, but uh, Nicole Savoy, she won. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to hear Oscar's thoughts. He hasn't really chimed in at all. He's kind of silent over there. Well, I did. I mean, I was mentioning about the women's tournament. Um, How about the tag tournament? It was pretty good. I mean, I, it was all we were predicted. BP Ray was going to win the whole thing, and you he did. You were happy. I'm sorry. I love Peter Avalon. Ray Rose was cool dude. Love both of those guys. But uh, I think the guys who beat them down after they lost, uh, Los Mandinos should have won. Uh, those are my boys, uh, Tito, Tito and um, and uh, Rico. Like Those guys are... Fucking beast! Um, How much heat it got in that? And that when he en- when he entered the the ring, N- not better yet, they had to take someone's chair and and you know had to get on usually like like a step. You know how like, you know on WWE shows when they use the steps to get in the ring. That's what they did. They they grabbed someone's chair and they used the step to get in the ring. <laughs> so that's how pure hills. They did it with dick mood, yeah. They're pretty much that's like dick. awesome. Yeah. They're pretty much What about dicks. my comrade? Your comrade? Oh, out in the first round, I believe. He lost to the... Uh, was it? Oh, our last guest, Adam Thornstone, and, you know, Reno Scum, so they, they beat Reno that. Scum did well. I, I, I thought Reno Scum did well at the tournament. Forever Hooligans did good. Um, yeah. Uh, it was great. You know, it was a good tag team. I thought, you know... Maybe next year if they ever do it again, maybe throw in some new tag teams. Uh, but it, it was a good tag team tournament overall. I just for some reason I think the females outshining the guys. Uh, this is my opinion. I think because there's more girls. But how about that Gala match? That Gala match was crazy. Um, Ooh, Famous yeah. B, Famous B, Ryan Taylor, uh, Little Cholo, um, SoCal Crazy, Ridiculoso. yeah, Ridiculoso, and uh, Adiachi uh, Loco. Mariachi Loco, uh, that shit was crazy. Uh, I couldn't even keep fucking score. That's how crazy the match was going. <laughs> but but um, yeah. Mariachi Loco is the new uh, AWS uh, light heavyweight champion. That was a shocker. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, yeah. If Fame and, didn't maybe, win, or maybe because they, uh, he's on, or maybe because of Lucha Underground. But the same time, well, Mariachi Loco works familiar. for Lucha Underground too. I know. I know. Same. That's why and, Mariachi Loco. But then at the same time, I think he made a famous beat part of Lucha Underground. So, like, hmm. All, well, there, there was three guys in that match that worked for Lucha Underground. And it was Lil Cholo, a.k.a. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Cisco, and uh, Maniachi Loco, and Famous B. Cause famous B, just, he, he basically said he's going to start working with them. Speaking of uh, Lucha Underground, Willie Mack is now uh, working with them. Uh, also... Uh, uh, Shane Strickland, I believe, is now working. I know, too. I fucking missed that shit. I was pissed, man. Come on, Shane Strickland in the West Coast. Come on, I missed that it. Is, the fuck? That is a good thing. That is a one hundred percent good thing. The King of Swerve, man. You guys need to check that man out. He's so good. I was hoping to hear Michael Jackson, but I doubt it'll happen to the Underground. I'm trying to talk this man into going to Lucha Underground over IWO. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know what? I uh, will do it. I want to lose your underground over IWL. <laughs> love IWL. I love you guys, but uh, love yeah. IWL too because they're both running the same day. 
<laughs> I know, but now I just just to not not to get confused, Matt and Tom Burnett were talking about. I got an email from Lucha Underground, and they're gonna they, they said that there's more tapings coming on February the seventh and eighth, and February twenty first and twenty second. So I decided I'm gonna go to all of them. Fuck it, I ain't gonna miss no more fucking Lucha Underground. So shit, I'm here and I missed a cage match. The fuck, and supposedly. Uh, there was reports that cheerleader Melissa was backstage. Is, is she coming to Lucha Underground? That's pretty badass. I mean, I know we got nine yeah. minutes here on the show. We got nine minutes here on the show. Let's cover real quick that uh, the matchup with Johnny Gargano and um, and uh, B Boy. That was a good match. And uh, Papa Don. You mean that, 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 that match, was, you mean? Yeah, and Papa Don. That was a good match. Papa Don is Papa Don, man. It's crazy, dude. Probably one of the most <laughs> underrated uh, hills in professional wrestling. So I needs to get that guy. guy. Fucking, the guy was fucking using uh, racist. Um, I don't say jokes, but you know, racist comebacks, like telling guys like, "Hey, does your uncle sell oranges in the freeways, or does your <laughs> dad mow the lawn, or some bullshit?" And then, and then the next day, when you're in a tag match with Willie Mac. I mean, he bit Willie Mack and said he tastes like chocolate. <laughs> and he also said to Willie Mack, uh, hold on, did you swim down? You been uh, drinking uh, that grape soda? <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. And well, real quick, because we got eight it. minutes. Real quick, because we got eight minutes. Uh, towards the end of the match, uh, with B-Boy and Willie Mack lost, and at, and uh, Willie Mack accidentally kicked B-Boy, and it looks like they're going to have a few, those two, coming for the AWS title, because uh, they had some attention at the end, so, but we'll see. We have eight minutes here, so I know we uh, have a lot uh, to talk about. So that means that, oh, before that, that means pretty much saying that that tag team has broken up, you can say. Maybe in AWS only, but uh, we have eight minutes here. I don't know. We'll we have eight, we have we have eight we have eight minutes here on Wrestling Heads Radio. Um, uh, we might as well just go ahead and throw out these plugs, and we can finish talking about what we're talking about on Friday show. Be sure to tune in Friday. Uh, we'll probably talk more uh, more about um, the race to the ring. We'll talk about some Ring of Honor and some more stuff. Um, my boy Matt, always a pleasure to having you here on the show. Um, did you want to throw some plugs out? Hold on, real, real quick, before you throw out your plugs, I want to give a shout-out to Alpha 1. Shout-out to Alpha 1. We, uh, we're working with them. They have uh, their next show, Watch the Throne 3. Uh, definitely doing big things over there. Shout-out shout out, shout out to them. Uh, but uh, how about you throw out some plugs, uh, Mac? Because I know any yeah, Power is going to be coming out. Yeah, watch the Throne Three. That is February the twenty second. Some big things planned for that show. Also, Beta Pro going down as well. I got some big things planned for that, so you definitely want to be there for both shows, February twenty second. Um, I'd like to announce that Weekly Wrestling Podcast is sponsoring Super Kick this Saturday night. Uh, big main event of Chris Sabin versus Paul London. We also have the alternative Ashley Six taking on Brent Banks. We got a big six pack challenge with Silesia Sparks and Marion Fontaine involved and much more on that card. So some big things going down at Super Kick this Saturday night in Toronto. Definitely suggest checking them out. Uh then like you guys said, Alpha One Wrestling, Smash Wrestling as well. Smash Wrestling's uh, in a couple of weeks, Battle Line, some big things going down there. Just announced Josh Alexander versus Sonata. Uh some passport issues with Beth Music, so that's not going down. But uh, I don't want to take up too much more time here, so just follow us at Weekly W Podcast. Follow the Elite Podcast Network at Elite, Elite Podcast Net, excuse me. And Indie Power Rankings live tomorrow right here on the Elite Podcast Network, 9 p.m. Eastern. Definitely, man. Um, Tom, go ahead, man. Throw out uh, your Twitter and all that other good stuff that you got there. Yeah, all you got to do is follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. It's my only really social media account I keep active with. Follow me on there. Make sure to follow you back. Um, but before I pass it on to you guys, I want to give a big shout out to, tonight to Smash Wrestling. Um, oh, yeah. Smash was awesome. Yeah, Smash Wrestling had 
a, a stream of challenge accepted tonight. Uh, incredible event. It was fre freaking awesome, top to bottom, all these different matchups. Um, highly enjoyed it. So thank you to them. Um, Chikara and Inner Species Wrestling were also doing some streams tonight. Perhaps a big shout out to them. And Beyond Wrestling put up the raw alternative that was uh, streamed last week. They put it up on YouTube, and it will be available until 8 p.m. tomorrow. So anytime you want to watch it, it's on Beyond Wrestling YouTube channel. So big shout-out to all those companies. They always are doing great stuff and just bringing out more content, taking advantage when a, a snowstorm hits uh, the Northeast over here. Yeah, big thing Definitely. for them. Uh, big congrats to them. Big shout-out to them. I agree, Tom. Yeah, uh, a lot of wrestling for people to watch. Also, free free uh, free match on SmashWrestling dot com. The Young Bucks versus the Super Smash Brothers. Go check that out if you want to watch some more wrestling. Uh, it, and um, go ahead, Oscar. Uh, we got four minutes. Go ahead, throw out your plugs. All right, you guys can follow me at Sinister Six Three Two at Twitter and Instagram. Um, check out WrestlingS dot com. I'm trying to do a new blog, a new monthly blog uh, of all this party when it comes to wrestlers, like what they did the whole month. I, I think now it's the time to do it because January is about to wrap up. If you guys get, can come up with a title or help me out with a title, I uh, will appreciate it. Just hit me up at Center 632 or any of you three stooges catch me out, and that's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had to be a heel there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. And I guess to the next show... Uh, We'll talk about Justin Gabriel's release if anybody cares about him. One more thing I wanted to throw out there. Uh, we're going to be having the 2015 top prospect, Donovan Dijak, on the show as well. I believe it's his first interview since winning that tournament. So uh, look, be on the lookout for that. Sorry, continue, Skiz. Definitely. Um, follow Wrestling Heads on Twitter. Um, again, uh we're always here on the Elite Podcast Network every Mondays and Fridays, 11.30 East Coast time. Tune in. We're on YouTube.com backslash Wrestling Heads. Uh, what else we got? You follow me at WH Skits, WrestlingHeads.com, just like Oscar said. That's the spot to go to if you need uh, that news uh, in professional wrestling. And, Don't forget um, Pro Wrestling Tees. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash wrestling heads and uh my boy Matt also got a uh uh Pro Wrestling Tees uh uh go ahead throw your plug out there, bro. Yeah, just uh just look it up. Pro wrestling tees uh dot com. Indie power rankings and WWP support it. Support the Elite Podcast Network. And Definitely. also before we close out, remember people, P W G tickets go on sale Thursday. Don't tell them. Uh, I don't want my boy, ticket to be gone. Mafia. <laughs> I don't. Hey, I don't want my ticket to be gone. Don't be uh, <laughs> don't, be, don't be letting people know. I'm just joking. Uh, but yeah, this Thursday, PWG. Yeah, yeah, it's not like Tom and Matt's gonna be there, but you will be there. Oh, <laughs> there's there other people. Late. Hey, I'm not talking about these two. I'm talking about our listeners. What if listeners want to get PWG tickets, and we're and then we're fucked with that front row. I know I'm getting front row, but uh, uh, it's a. We got 90 seconds here on the show. Uh, it was an awesome show, uh, fun show, and we'll be back Friday to talk some more wrestling. Uh, until then, I'm Skits here with Oscar, Tom, and Matt, and uh, we're out. Peace. Peace.